All right, hello everyone. Eric Marks here again with FindingMiddleEarth.com, and today we're going to talk about On One Photo Raw 2018. Uh, do I use it? Have I used it? How do I use it? All those questions I get all the time. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, quickly, before we get started, if you guys head over to my website at FindingMiddleEarth.com, click the big subscribe button in the top right of the page, pop your email in the box, and you'll get access to a free 45-minute video going through my landscape photography gear, my camera bags, favorite lenses, all that good stuff. Uh, also, remember my uh, ultimate landscape photography post-processing and exposure blending course is on sale still from $99 to only $25 it's over 10 hours of video content, step-by-step uh, -step processes through Photoshop, uh, just geared towards landscape photography and how to get the best results out of your images. So I know you're going to love that. Check it out. Uh, all right, so let's, let's uh, dive into Photoshop here. So um, the, the way that I use uh, On One Photo Raw 2018 is as a plugin inside of Photoshop. So if you're in Photoshop and you go to Filter, uh, you have your plugins here. So I have On One, and you can go to On One Develop 2018 or On One Effects 2018. And the best part about uh, using it in here is that uh, I, I've always kind of used my raw processor, which means like if I was using Lightroom or Capture One or On One, I use the raw processor to kind of hold all my images and just do some very quick stuff. And then I export to Photoshop and kind of do the rest, like the other 90% of the photo. So my main raw processor, if you guys follow me on Facebook, you guys know that a couple weeks ago, uh, or I guess like about a month ago now, I said goodbye to Lightroom forever. I'm just tired of it. I hate the how slow it is. Uh, I, I hate the how it renders my images, especially my Fujifilm files. And I, I just basically Lightroom is just dead to me now. And I picked up Capture One as my main processor. Uh, and I'm loving that the way it, it renders the files. It's just so good at rendering the files, okay? But it sucks at uh, removing chromatic aberration. It's not so good in its contrast slider and its highlight slider. It's okay, but it's not great. Um, but it, it renders the images and the color beautifully, okay? So I use that as my image, uh, my raw processor to just take it into Capture One and export it to Photoshop. And once I'm in Photoshop, the other 90% of the work is done using On One Photo Raw 2018 and a couple of other tools inside of Photoshop. Because On One is freakishly good at color and contrast and adding details and bringing out shadow details without adding noise. And On One's dehaze slider, by the way, if you've never checked out their dehaze slider, I guess they call it just the haze slider. Uh, it's freakishly good. It's just freakishly good. It like adds vibrance, recovers highlights. I mean, it just like makes this like magic photo. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and just work on this photo for a minute, just so I can give you an example of how I would use Photo Raw 2018. So I'm gonna up here into filters and like I said I'm going to use it as a plugin so you can use develop or effects so I'm going to use on one effects we'll just start with that we'll let that load here for just a second and I am using the most current version uh, which by the way if you guys are using on one photo raw 2017 and you're thinking about the jump to 2018 uh, I would say go ahead and do it because it is this new version is freakishly fast like freakishly fast compared to that. I mean, you can watch this. So we're in the effects module right now. If I just click over the, to the develop module, look how quick that is. It just flies back and forth between these. Uh, so they've made it so much snappier. I love it, especially compared to Lightroom. This thing is just a joy to use. So let's just um, take a look at some of these uh, filters here that I like to use. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look in the glow section and just kind of have fun. The way I process images is just kind of experimenting with stuff and having fun. So let's just kind of click on some of this stuff and see where I can, I just like to get myself to like a good starting point and then we'll just see what happens from there. Now this photo was taken in, in Disney World. So I'm gonna kind of um, go a little overboard on the dreamy color effects here because it's it's a Disney photo and I always like going just a little bit, you know, if, if if reality is like right here, I like to nudge it sideways just a little bit so that uh, it definitely has that Disney-esque feeling. All right, so I think I liked one up here. I think it was Deep Forest maybe. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look at Deep Forest. Let's. The great thing about uh, Photo Raw 2018 is whenever you add a filter or a preset or whatever, you can take the opacity of that layer, uh, of, that, of the preset or the filter down, which is awesome. So I'm gonna take the opacity down to, uh, I don't know, maybe 70 something. 
Uh, or actually, I'm going to ramp it up a little bit, maybe 75. Okay, and then I'm going to create a mask on this filter, which is awesome that you can do that. And I'm going to choose to paint out, make sure I'm feathered, and I'll paint out maybe 50% of this effect. Uh, and I'm going to paint it out in the, uh, let's see, upper portion here, the sky area. Okay, good. I'm going to paint it out some here in the reflection in the water. And we'll paint it out down here in the corners where it's kind of darkening the image. But I like the glow effect on the lights here where the uh, architecture is. It makes for a really nice little look. I'm going to shrink the brush and get rid of that glow in the trees. That way it brings out a little more texture in the trees. But I like the glow on the lights, the little city lights over there uh, inside of Epcot here in Magic Kingdom. We'll go back to paint in because I think I accidentally nicked some spots here. Okay. We'll add a little bit more to the reflection, why not? All right, so that's just like a starting point. This is gonna be something that I like to do there. Uh, then you can click Add Filter and we can start again. Uh, let's see, let's go into <laughs> Sunshine. The Sunshine folder, see what we can do with this. Let's go to Radiance and see what that does. Ooh, that's, that's not a bad look. Let's go to Strong. Okay, Natural, Glow, Sunshine. I liked the, I think I liked Radiance. Let's see, maybe Strong. No, yeah, I like Strong. I like, like what Strong's doing to the color. So let's actually take the, the Strong, the Sunshine here, and let's take the temperature up to a warmer tone here, okay? And let's take the opacity of this down a little bit overall in the image. Do something like that, maybe. Okay, and again, it's darkening the corners. So 80%, so let's create another mask on this and we'll do paint out, we'll make it bigger here and we'll just paint out like 40% and I just wanna paint it out in the upper corner here. It's making it a little too dark. All right, let's paint it out down here too. It's just making my corners a little too dark and I don't like that. Okay, I like that, that's nice. So now that we're here, let's, let's hop over into the develop module. Now that we're in, uh, since we're done with the effects for right now, and I'll show you what I mean by the, the haze slider. So watch this. I'm in the develop module inside of uh, on one 2018 here, and watch the haze slider as I just crank that down. That is just nuts. Now, you can, you can see how you can easily go overboard with this, but it's just nuts. I'm gonna crank the shadows a little bit. Okay, just a tad. We'll keep going with that haze slider. I'm gonna take this warm tone a little further this way. Maybe add a little bit more magentas. I'm just kind of going crazy with this. I, I'm, I'm kind of having fun. Okay, let's see what else. Um, I'm gonna do show more and I wanna add a curve. So let's go down here and add a curves layer. All right, maybe boost the mid-tones slightly there. Okay. Let me bring the highlights down a little bit more. Something like that. All right, go back into the, uh, let's see. Well, I'm trying to decide if I want to do a little bit more. There's some sharpening going on here. Let's see, Let's we could do add layer and do a uh, local adjustment here. So let's take uh, just some, I don't know, maybe almost half a stop of exposure here and hit B on the keyboard to access the brush. And we'll make it nice and feathered here. And let's add like 70% of this exposure. And we'll kind of brighten the, the middle of the image up a little bit. Okay, we'll even do a little bit of the sky down here. I want some of this to be a little bit brighter just in here because that's natural. The sky always gets brighter as it gets closer to the horizon line. I want to do that and let's take the opacity down. I love that you can do that because it just blends it in nicely. All right, that's awesome. And you can also, of course, at this point, play with the exposure a little more. So we can do that. Uh, we can pump the shadows if we want. That might be nice. Okay, we can bring the highlights down a little bit in the town. Keep bumping that exposure, but not too much. I don't want there to be like a big band in the sky. So we'll do something like that maybe. Okay, so let's just, and again, this is all just an, an example. So let's just do that and let's say done. And the second I hit done down here in the bottom right, uh, it's gonna say rendering image. And it'll take just a second to pop it back into Photoshop for us. Okay, so here we are back into Photoshop. And if we just do a quick before and after, that's before, after, 
before, after, and there you go. That's why I love using uh, Photo Raw 2018 to do a lot of my um, just kind of like preemptive color work and stuff because it's you can do so much inside of uh, All One Photo Raw 2018, including the masking and stuff. Uh, so that by the time I get back in Photoshop, you know, I can do any kind of final touches. I can do my sharpening through Nick Collection like I like to do, and I can add uh, some adjustment layers and just fine-tune some stuff. But, uh, I, I mean, I, I use All One Photo Raw 2018 in every single photo, and I do it in, you know, a different way every time. Sometimes I go in there and I don't use any filters. I'll hop into the presets, and then I'll fine-tune the presets. Or sometimes I just use the develop mode because um, I use that On One Photo Raw 2018 haze slider on almost every single photo that you've seen me post. Um, and I use it in different amounts. You know, sometimes Sometimes 10, 15% is perfect, but sometimes, uh, you know, you have to go 60 or 70% on some photos if it actually has haze or some kind of atmospheric haze. Um, but it's, it's just fantastic. And it, and it really, uh, the, my favorite thing about it is you can kind of push things a little further than you would be able to with other plugins. And it doesn't ruin the image as fast. What I mean by that is it doesn't add as much noise. It doesn't uh, ruin the shadows. It doesn't add color banding uh, very often at all. And it, it doesn't enhance chromatic aberration. Those are all things you have to think about. Um, you know, all the little things that can ruin your image when it comes to print. Uh, those are the things, the little detail things you have to think about when you're, uh, you know, processing the image is that, you know, is it, if I make, if I take a step forward here, is it going to take me three steps backwards over on the chromatic aberration end of things? Or if I, you know, recover the highlights, is it going to give me noise or recover the shadows? Is it going to give me all, you know, all these colored pixels? There's all these things, uh, that, you know, you have to worry about when you're, when you're processing. So anyway, that's that photo. Uh, I'm going to give you one more very very quick example because I don't want this to go on too long. Uh, this is a photo that I took with the X-T2 uh, when I was in Disney World. I was actually on a moving boat. So I, I had this thing on uh, 11 frames per second with the battery grip, just taking off frames, hoping that one of them would be sharp. And this one turned out uh, semi-sharp, so not too bad. It's got a, I, I just, I had to take the photo because it is an absolutely gorgeous sunset. So let me hit Command J to duplicate the photo here. We'll hop back into On One uh, 2018, and we'll hop into the Develop module this time instead of the uh, Effects module. And we'll just wait for that to load here. All right, so here we are into uh, into the develop module of On One uh, 2018, and I'm gonna obviously start with the haze slider, and you can see how just a little bit of that goes a long way here. So I'm gonna go maybe 25 percent. Um, I want to see my levels here on my histogram, so we'll take the whites up a little bit. Okay, not too much. Uh, we'll take the blacks up a little bit we'll do some shadow recovery there because that uh the hotel there that's the grand floridian hotel it's a little bit too dark do some highlight recovery i think i want to bump the exposure overall just a little bit uh, and then we'll do a little bit more highlight recovery there okay we'll go down to structure and i'm actually going to go minus with the structure it's going to add a little bit of a glow there to the light uh let's see if we want to go to the blue area of the white balance or maybe the warmer there we go let's do warmer tones and add some magenta because i remember it was a very pink sunset in person i mean you can see how colorful the raw file was just coming into photoshop there uh, let's just keep again when i when i edit disney photos i like to just keep going with it because it's it's very disney-esque to make it a little more magical than you normally would let's take the vibrance up a little bit maybe add a little bit of saturation nothing too crazy because again i'm always going to zoom in and make sure that i'm not ruining the image make sure i'm not adding any kind of unnecessary fringing or tons of noise here and surprisingly uh the shadow areas are actually holding up really well i don't see much noise at all and I think I was shooting at a, at a, I don't know what exactly what ISO I was shooting at. I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm going to guess it was probably somewhere around 1600 or so just to try to keep my shutter speed decent enough uh, for this. Because I was also um, trying to drag the shutter speed a little bit there to keep enough light coming into the, uh, the hotel so that it wouldn't go into silhouette. Uh, okay, so let's move down here. Uh, we'll add a little bit of sharpening and see what it does. I know on one photo raw sharpening is so much better than Lightroom. Let's zoom in and see what that did. Yep, not bad at all. Didn't add much noise, if any. We'll keep going with it. 
Okay, I'm okay with that. Uh, let's see, it doesn't really need any distortion control. Uh, I'm gonna do show more, and I'm gonna add a curves layer like I did in the last image. And we're gonna just kinda clamp that down here. I wanna really get some good color out of that naturally. Uh, which that's a little uh, tip, by the way. Um, if you want, if you shoot a sunset like this, that's very naturally colorful, and you don't want to ruin it with vibrance and saturation and like you know 20 and 30 percent amounts, um, the best way to do it is just by lowering the exposure and then recovering the shadows and other parts of the image. Because the the lower you lower that exposure on sunsets like this, it just naturally brings out those tones that are very pleasing to the eye. And as you can see, that curves layer did that. So there you go. That's just the develop module, and that already is so much better than uh, the develop module that I came from in Lightroom. It's a million times better. So we'll add a little bit of contrast. Um, I'm gonna add a local adjustment real quick before we end this. Um, let's see. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of exposure. Okay, maybe 0.25. And then I'm gonna add uh, a little bit of structure down here in the details. Okay, let's add 25. So we'll take my brush and I'm just gonna brush that exposure and the structure on this hotel here, just on the hotel. Now what's neat is you can click this thing up here and this is your, I think they call it the magic brush. Um, and this, or no, they call it the perfect brush, sorry, the perfect brush. And the perfect brush basically detects all these edges as best it can so that it doesn't spill on the sky here. So let's crank that exposure up a little bit more. All right, whoops, I think I just did something there. Let me get rid of that. I'm not sure what I did. Here we go. I think I'm good now. All right. So I'm just easily painting that. I'll paint some of that in on the boat as well. I'm just very easily painting it in. Uh, we'll take the opacity up a little further to 100%. And I'm just going to ease that in, paint over here. And then what's nice is you can go into um, the quick mask mode or the mask preview mode or whatever and hit the O key and you can see what it's doing. So it's doing a really good job at detecting the edges, but let's hit X on the keyboard to uh, paint it out and we'll just kind of tidy those edges up just a little bit, but it, it actually did a really good job, which I'm kind of impressed with there because we don't want it in the sky. That's the biggest thing. We're not, we don't want to add this like random strip of exposure and structure to the sky. I just want to add it to this hotel here. So there we go, let's hit O again to get out of that. And now that we have painted over that, now we can take the exposure and we can kind of bump that up a little bit more. Maybe even add a little bit more structure. Let's take it down, that's too much, that's introducing too much noise there. Um, I'm trying to figure out, let's see, let's add some temperature. Should we go into the blues or the, yeah, let's go into the blues with that. I think it's always nice to have like some bluish shadow tones if you're gonna have a really orange sky. Let's do a blue, yeah, we'll leave that alone. We'll just do blue, and then let's desaturate and devibrance just a little bit there, okay? And I know I might be taking this way too far as far as, or way too long for the video here, but I just have fun doing this. Sorry, post-processing is just too much fun. Okay, so I'll, I'll just say that, that this is almost good for me. Um, and, you know, my Disney photos are, are just fun to process because you can kind of, it, just photographing Disney World kind of gives you that that creative license to kind of take things a little further and, uh, you know, somewhat over-process the images. Um, so now it's time to export this, throw it on Instagram and have a bunch of crazy Disney people like this all day. All right, cool. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you guys do want to get on one photo raw 2018, uh, use my discount code that's in the description. It'll actually save you 20% off the total price. Even if they have a sale price, it saves you 20% off the price. So uh, go ahead and check that out in the description below. Use my coupon code. Uh, it actually gives me a little bit of a, a commission every time you use it. It helps me out. They gave that to me to help you guys out. Uh, so that way I can always keep, um, recording these videos and I'm not paid by them or sponsored by them or anything uh, to say anything good uh, because obviously, you know, I use Capture One as my main raw processor and I use this for like the effects processing. So anyway, that's just to help you guys out and, and in return, they help me out there. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you would like to find out more about me and how you can improve your photography, please check out my premium tutorials at findingmiddleearth.com slash store.